Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Uh, I want you guys to do me a favor, and if you haven't, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to Bass and Bonds, I please do so. Uh, and I would ask that you also go ahead and go watch one of my other videos that's actually monetized, because I'm not even going to try to monetize this one, because we're going to do a full teardown and put back together of a PSA dagger, which is Glocks in general, and during that process... Now, for YouTube reviewer AI, uh, I'm going to take a stock, more or less, Glock pistol, break it all the way down, put it all the way back together for educational purposes, so you guys can see if you were to have a mechanical problem, what it might be by just seeing internally inside of one. I'm not recommending anybody go ahead and do this, but if you wanted to, uh, technically you wouldn't know how, but I am not a gunsmith, so uh, anything... You listen to me about is at your own risk, just so you know that. But uh, I'm going to try to get through what the differences between basically the Gen 5 that you can't go backwards at, you know, non-compatible stuff. Because most all of your Gen 3 clones, uh, Gen 3 Glocks, Interchange, uh, the, and one of the lesser known things, and you guys comment below if you'd like to see a Shadow Systems uh, standalone video. I keep hearing the Shadow Systems uh, blasters referred to as Gen 3, right? They're like a Gen 3. Well, technically, they're a Gen 4. Uh, the way the barrels, the uh, slide release, that, everything about a Shadow Systems is pretty much Gen 4. Uh, so, not Gen 5, but uh, a lot of things not Gen... A lot of stuff interchanges. But anyway, we're going to get into that. But I'm not even going to try to monetize this video. They're trying to demonetize, which I consider de demonize uh, any channel that, even if you're trying to be safely and educational and like uh, putting together like Johnny Glocks does, I'm going to use him as an example, a video educational about what not to do with a Glock trigger is more of a safety video than it is a harmful video. If you can put some challenge video on there that's having kids eat Tide Pods and jump and stack different crates up to where they're breaking legs and necks and that stuff's allowed, but I can't come on here and tell you guys be careful about this or that on a, you know, firearm. Uh, they're not really paying attention to what they are and not allowing, in my opinion. Enough said about that, right? Enough politics. Let's get into this video. Quick on what tools I'm using. Uh, I had to get a punch set. I did not have, uh, well, a set that would work. So this is just a cheap set I picked up at, I believe it at all places, Walmart. Four bigger ones, can't use them. Use the two smaller ones, but you could always uh, whittle these down, right, with a knife. No, you would need a grinder. Grind them down to make them to the size you needed or whatever. For future other things, uh, really other than that, that is about all you need uh, if you're completely... Like, I'm not going to get that far, but if I were completely putting uh, stuff in, you might need that for your uh, the sleeve for your striker sleeve. Uh, most uh, kits you buy comes with a tool like this. I have several floating around that they may even make aluminum ones and all that. And then if you're putting in changing sights, uh, that very front one can be a booger, but I'll be honest, I think I got the, I think the very first set I messed with, I used with a set of needle nose pliers. The plastic ones, anyway. But, and one of the downsides that some people claim, anyway, when it comes to a dagger, is that you have roll pins. So, I'm going to use the Shadow Systems as an example. And the newer Glock Gen 5 actually has just two pins, right? They did away with the upper one. So, down in here, you'll see it. The Gen 3, 4, most all of your Glocks are going to have three, uh, not roll pins, but just... Uh, I'll just call them pins. But the, I believe the trigger pin may be the exact same between, I haven't even tried it between the dagger and the Glock, but the other, all other pins are different. But with these, they're actually uh, metal or, as in this case with the shadow systems, that back one's just plastic. But I literally can take this entire pistol apart with this tool, which is kind of geared to uh, pop off the back uh, grip pad and the, uh, the uh, magwell but anyway you you need more than that you need that and oh you will need a hammer of some sort 
but I'll tell you where and when not what not to hammer. But you can use this if as long as you know on uh, certain things. You can use the metal one if you're using as I'm going to use on this, just because I've already used that one for other stuff. But anyway, and you will need something to for the pins to go through, which uh, you, they sell all kinds of fancy stuff. I just have an old roll of uh, purple duct tape. A very cheap, like from Dollar Tree, dollar twenty-five cent uh, roll of duct tape. Works awesome. It just holds it up, uh, as you're going to see. So, like I said, this video will not be able to be monetized, and I'm going to use this one because I'm going to also show you if you want to switch stuff to Gen Five. This is actually my 19x uh, slide, but since it's got a comp and all that on it, so we're going to just throw this on it. And I'll show you how to put it back on, on the putting it back together. But just for these circumstances, we're going to pop it on. So you, you're dealing with a complete firearm. We're going to go ahead and remove this. You could actually technically do everything I'm going to do and leave that light right on. But we're going to remove the light. And if you wanted to do what I just did there, I put it basically a Gen 3 on what is now a Gen 5 front end. They do make a little adapter piece. I've talked about it in other videos. Real simple little adapter that basically fits in on the back side. So it's gonna set like this. And I may show you how to put that back on when we go back together. So you have a fully, you guys can see clear, operational firearm. And you decided that you wanted to, first of all, if you just wanna clean it, and I guess I'll stop where I, well, I would recommend that all the further down you need to take it, and clean it out but then if you want to do the trigger or other stuff you would need to pull that out so it's real simple and everybody says you need to pull the trigger but I guess I kind of always put my firearms up like after I get done shooting them I kind of like at the range I, like in the last shot I have the trigger pulled because you really don't if the trigger isn't activated you know if it's already back you don't have to like reset it you just barely pull back like just a hair. You're just relieving the pressure on uh, and trying to do it through the camera. It's a, kind of a nightmare. But anyway, you just barely, just pull back enough to relieve the pressure. I wouldn't pull back quite far enough. And then it'll slide right off. Like you don't have to re-rack it and then pull the trigger and then do what I just did. Like you, if it's already loaded up, but I don't know. I don't even know. I've never really heard anybody talk about it. Is it a good idea when you're just you know, storm, you're not carrying it, you're not, it's not a duty, it's just a range pistol. Do you even want it, like, basically, the slide racked? I guess it doesn't matter. So, we're going to put this to the side, and we're going to take apart the lower, this is the lower, upper slide, and barrel, and all that assembly. I'm not going to take the red dot off. It's already kind of close, not really zero, but kind of close. So, you're going to need, not the littlest punch, if that's all you have, you could probably use it. But the roll pin do have a center. Uh, uh, if you guys don't know what a roll pin is, I'll show you that when I get them out. But basically, there's a hole in the center you could be uh, not work. You need to really, this one is matches up to perfect. It's the exact size. That's the best way to have it. It's a little punch that's the exact same size as the roll pins. And I would suggest pop them out first. Just kind of set it on where it's got pretty good support. Line it up in there. And I use this hammer. Use something that you can punch it through. It's gonna be a little loud, a little bouncy. Punch through, punch that one out. And I kind of use this if I'm going in there uh, messing with triggers, it's about the right size. So anyway, that roll pin just, all it's doing, it doesn't even really need to be nowhere near a roll pin. You could probably, I don't know, I haven't gone that far to try to change it out with something that isn't as hard to come in and out. This one definitely has to be something pretty stout. It's what's holding in your, uh, well, as you'll see, hang on. And I'm, I'm kind of hitting probably harder than I need to just, whoa, because I'm in a hurry. So you just pop those two out. And this one, you don't need to on any, maybe on a brand new one, but on any of these used ones or as I've uh, used them, I don't need to use a hammer of any sort. You just really, in my opinion, you just need something to push through. Because this right here, and I'll show you as I, when I go to put it back together, you just need to like get that out of the way, and these will push right through, like real simply. So I just push that out, and I'll show you the pins. 
And they are uh, easily, you can tell, the row pin, and I'll, I guess let me finish that. The shortest one goes in at the back. The longest one goes in at the front. Uh, the little guy is just holding in your uh, trigger housing. The front one is actually holding in. It goes right in here. And it's holding in your front, uh, uh, I guess you call that your locking block, the front rails, like this is all one unit together. So why they, I guess they maybe had issue just the way these are designed, not quite like a Glock, like the a Glock and the shadow system, that is molded in and then the locking block assembly back here separate. So just the like on the old style Gen 3, maybe in 4, and they did away with it in 5, but like two pins are holding it back here. It's a little different makeup. So I guess they, I guess there's no way to do away with the, you know, longer one. You definitely don't need this one in the back. And I don't have an issue with them. And I'll give you a quick few tips on them. If you're dealing with roll pins, I know this might end up being a long video. You know, there's just a pin. It's there. It's one solid chunk of. It could be, you know, the in this case, I'm guessing still, but they could be aluminum or whatever. Solid pin. That's your. Once they are called a roll pin, they're usually just a thinner piece of metal that is rolled up into the shape of a pin. That's roll pin, right? Pretty simple, self-explanatory. One of the tricks is to, uh, from the get-go, the first time you pop them out and go to put them back in, you will see where you've hit. Always go with the side you didn't hit to put them back in. So if I were to go to put these right back in, I would just look at this one, and I would realize that that's a fresh side, hasn't been hit. That side has more of a chance of gouging and scraping as it goes in. Now, if you're also worried about that, you can look right up there, and you can easily take a little file... A uh, piece of sand, you know what I mean? If you if you feel you've got a burr that's sticking on the outside and you need to take it back in. I've just been popping them in and out. I just make sure that I don't go the wrong way. You know, if you, you take out your pins enough and then you go to put one back in, that's when you could, uh, basically what will end up happening, first of all, it may not go through. You may have to knock it back out and then turn it around or whatever, but you can kind of gouge out the uh, polymer on your frames more than likely doing it that way so anyway just a quick tip make sure you're you know it doesn't matter which side if you're like oh i like to start this side i'm left-handed or whatever just once you start you know this pin i can knock it in from the left or the right in my opinion you may want to just stick with the same side but as long as i go with the side that has not been sort of flattened down from being hit on so yeah so once we're to here uh then this is just going to slide out here's your uh Slide stop, uh, horrible design in my opinion, but that's the way all Glocks are, not just a dagger. Like, I don't like that. I keep hitting it. I hate everything about it. When you go to, like, uh, release, you know, if you push down, that can, on certain ones, depending on what, how much pressure is on it, uh, can actually, it, it's not like it hurts, but it's not a pleasant feeling. It's just a not a good design in my opinion. Uh, and I've talked about it uh Keg works, makes one, but the one I'm looking at is the ghost one. It basically moves this part up here and puts a little nub on it. I think that's the one. They're like $18.99. The keg works are like $50. You can get them on eBay for $44.95 or whatever. But So at some point, I just, I hate to, like if I buy it for one, I'm going to buy it for all, and I have like uh, six of them right now. So anyway, we're not going to do that. Then this is just your, I call it the, I, I guess it's a trigger assembly because you have, trigger shoe trigger bar the uh, trigger housing uh, then on to the trigger housing is the disconnector you also have your ejector on there part of the trigger bar is a crucif form which is uh, looks kind of like a crucifix right so I haven't talked and I'm not going to go into detail on triggers like there's tons of videos on this is just a Glock trigger I know it came out of a PSA it does have a shoe off of a Glock or whatever but it's basically a Oh, they're all the same. The only real issue with these is, like I've mentioned before in the video, I had it happen to me. I heard Johnny Glock's talking about it. I'm like, dude, who's going to do that? If you get that spring and just putting it in and it ends up sideways, it just creates this drag. The trigger will still work, but you'll like you can tell like something ain't right. It's that. 
So you got to make sure it's all the way down. And that's really the only trick uh, to, these are pretty simple. So sticking with the dagger itself, the, I guess, cool thing, maybe not cool thing, but kind of cool thing in my mind, is if this were to somehow mess up, you can change out that. Uh, this also slides out. Uh, I guess maybe I could use one other tool, a little straight speed over. But this part also, like maybe over the years, a wear on your rails or something, you can slide that out, and it could be changed out. This thing's dirty. I gotta clean it. So I'm not gonna go into the this. I will tell you real quick. Like these are real simple. I guess I could, in case somebody has an issue putting this back together. Oh my god. If we're gonna go, we might as well go all out, right? So your uh I'm not even sure what they call this. They something to do with the slide. Uh I've heard it get mixed up with the slide stop slide release sometimes. But this here, you just take something to push down. There's a, it's a piece of metal that's like sprung, lo you know, spring loaded. You just push that down, and then pick a side and push out one side or the other. You can almost sometimes hold it, and it'll start to fall out. The trick is when that's out, don't let that fly. I've literally lost one of these, so that comes out. And remember your. Uh, Flat side goes out, right? So one good thing about me, and I've got all these different frames around, it's easy to look at another one if you're like, I went in wrong. Because you can put this thing in backwards. I don't know if it would actually do a, any harm or not, but it can literally, you can put it in backwards and then this is right in there. But So flat part to the front. I guess let me take this out completely dismantle it'll just fall out but it's pretty simple the Glock 17 is different uh, Glock 19 17 oh all your nine millimeter Glocks anyway that piece I think is the same but this part is different on some of them so that's out the only other thing I didn't take out oh, I should have stopped I'll Remind me, I'll stop on the way putting it back together where uh, as far as you only need to take it to a, uh, I'm going to stick this back in. Because this is something really, unless you're changing that for adding a cool one, you know, gold anodized or something for looks. It's almost one of those things you never need to take off for cleaning or anything. So let me slide that back in, flat thing up to the front. Just slide it in. It's got its own little catch so and I stuck that back in but other than that the only thing left that we haven't monkeyed with on this is the uh, mag release now this one I'm not going to take out because of those two real long screws it's the same thing as what comes with the gen 3 except that parts added I'm going to show you I'm going to pop this out and then pop it back in because that's the only hard part I will show you that but I'm not going to try to take those screws out and slide that because it literally just slides out the side and then you slide a different one back in or this one and this is something you should never have to take out unless it fails or you just want to change it and I'll try to show you if I can get enough light in there you'll hear people talking about that this is and it is the stock one it's hard to use with that little uh, pad to push so I'm trying to show you but like right here, there's a pin, and there's not a lot of room. In the shadow systems, and this one may be, will light up better. And no, no way to be ambidextrous either. Like this thing, it's only cut out to, to push one way. It wouldn't push the other way, even if this uh, were able to switch around. So these, the dagger is, you know, it's on this side only. There's no way to switch that around. I can't get a good... Well, let me grab one of these fancy lights. Oh, that night ain't got no battery in it. Where's one of my fancy lights? I'll try to shine a little light in there. So if you see in there, you can see the part I'm talking about. I'm going to try to show you how to pop it out. It's real simple when you have everything else out. Oh, there's a different angle. 
So all I do is I come in here and I actually will stick my finger up. Oh, that sounded bad. Put your finger in there. It's not going to go anywhere. But so I'm trying to show you guys in case you really need to know how to do this. And I can't find the light to do it. Let me show you. Actually, hang on. Okay, so this is setting inside like so. So then underneath, there's a metal rod sticking up. And my lighting is horrible. And it slides in that thing. So all you have to do is reach down in there and basically bring it around with the screwdriver to where it slides out of that little slot and it pops out. And then you're going to do the same thing, put it back in. So I'm going to do that. You may not be able to see much of it. And I simply do it by... I put the screwdriver in there and then I use the side as like pressure and I just kind of twist and push as I go and it pops out. It's real simple. Now you can see that's loose. And then I do the same thing. You know, if I pull that out, put another one in, do whatever. Going back in, I do the same thing except I push, I kind of twist like this and use my finger a little. Hold this in with your thumb. And I just pop it back in. Basically the same way, just reverse it. So then it's back in. So if you have an issue, uh, comment below. I could try to, I guess, put together. I can't hold it where you guys can see it, where you can see in there and work it right. So yeah, it's part of trying to film some of this stuff. So that was pretty much as far down as you can take it. You're dealing with just plastic. Uh, you don't take the serial number off, you guys. You crazy guys. So let's jump to... Uh, let's talk about the modification real quick. Finish this out and, and then on the going back in case I... When we put it back together, if I forgot anything, I'll try to talk about it. So if you're wanting to take a dagger or if you're curious on a Gen 3, like I've got a awesome Gen 5 slide and i want to put it on a gen 3 the gen 4s actually uh it will work but the gen 3s you're limited unless you have a dremel tool now i'm not going to do it i'm just going to show you all i did and how nice you make it and all that is up to you or if you want to have it sent off or whatever because it can be done it's not like some impossible feat to go the opposite way like I mentioned earlier, you can get this little adapter to put a Gen 3 on a 5, but put a Gen 5 on a Gen 3, there's a couple things you got to change. But the main thing on the frame is you have to Dremel that out. And I knew I was going to do that. Hang on one second. I left out the fact of what it looks like before. Don't worry. we got plenty of them floating around. So I'm just going to show you to compare them. There's an untouched one. So if you can tell, the, the material I took out is really, I mean, I'll be honest, it's the biggest amount is right at the very front. Like it's not molded all the way down to where you have to take all that out. It's right at the front. And then you do have to, if you look here, see how the sharp edges along the edges and then a little bit along the bottom. Now, something I'm playing with right at the moment, I'll talk about, other than playing with these guns right now. I'm playing with the lockup. Like a more solid... I don't know how you say it. Like, so on most of your pistol, on the barrel and the slide lock up together, right? And that's important that they lock up the same way every time for accuracy. Well, on, I know a Glock, part of the reason why it's so reliable is there's a little give here and there or the daggers in general or whatever. But what you can kind of do is if you're doing it this way, or you could actually take your Gen 3, because I'm thinking about doing it with all mine that aren't even 
Gen 5 is cutting every one of them like this. You can add this to that, and then when you cut that out, before you really trim this all the way, you can actually leave it to where this, as it comes up, it's literally kind of touching and helping hold. I know there's going to be a lot of guys, oh, you can't do that, but you can. Like a free, so you fire, it goes back. As the slide's coming forward, it's still, everything's free. But like right at the end, it just, so there's no wobble, if that makes sense. And I'm going to try to, before I go to crazy, I'm going to, let me try to show you what I'm talking about. So, I'll show you with this one. No, that's got the wrong deal in it. So yeah, but I'll explain more later on that. So let's tear apart. We still have the upper to go. So, so far, I was going to try to, let me move this stuff. I want to try to get all the parts, more or less, that you take out in some sort of, and I'll just put this there, even though that's, uh, we didn't take it out. So, hang on. Let me get organized here real quick. Okay, so we took, we're we replacing that. We're not going to count this and this because if you were doing a Glock, you would still have two uh, like this. You would still have these back pieces. They stay in and then the front. And then, like I said, you never really have to. You could be changing a lot of stuff. And, and unless you need to change that for whatever reason, you, it's not in the way of anything. So there you see what we're dealing with so far. No problem. Now, when we come to this, this is pretty simple. Uh, and some people, I think I was watching Lenny McGill talk about it, like people are like, oh, well, I take mine apart, it comes out like that. It's You need it. When you put it back together, When you, it should be up like that. So you're just going to pull this down. Now, this one, I do have this little buffer thing in there, but you don't need that. So pretend it wasn't there. Take that off. You're going to take your barrel out. Pretty simple there, right? So then you're to here, and you've got some stuff. I'm going to dismantle this completely, then we'll talk about the... There's a few things you cannot upgrade to what the Gen 5 Glocks have. There's just a couple parts. There's no way... No way you can change. Otherwise, you're you're going to... You, you wouldn't... Everything is going to be a Gen 5, unless you have a Gen 5 uh, slide. So when you get to this point, you've only got a few things to take out in, internally here. You've got your firing pin, the plunger, and then your extractor, right? There's a little bit left in there, so you're going to need to slide this off. And the trick to that is uh, there's a little thing in here that you can use just anything. The punch works perfect for it. You're going to need to push down. So you're going to need to push that all the way down as far as you can. And while you're pushing that down, then you're going to slide this off. Keep your thumb over it because the uh, spring for the ejector could possibly, it shouldn't, but it could possibly go boing and flying out. Or, as I'll show you, this little, uh, I forget what they call that, this little plastic piece on the end of it could literally shoot out. Some of them fit tight, some of them are hard to even get on at all, and then some are just real loose. So then you might as well take this out as your firing pin assembly. There's a little bitty, unless you're going to like send this off to get something done, you don't need to mess with it. There's that little sleeve in there. I don't think I've got a sleeve laying around a spare one. If you look in there, you can see it. There is a little sleeve that looks basically like this, but it's completely all the way around. And then the center is cut out or the one end is like the other and it's just perfectly hollow. It doesn't have any form to it like this one does. To hold the uh, striker in place, just it's in there to it gives a channel for these to ride on. We'll talk about these in a minute. And I'll take it apart. So when you're to that point, uh, you can go ahead and pull this out. See how that just popped out? You can take this. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. So here's what I do. My hollow sun. I run just a long enough screw that. I can't take that completely out, which is fine. You don't have to. You can pop this little thing off if you want or just leave it on. 
So I don't have to pull that all the way out because I can't. So to get this out, you'll push down on the plunger. It will should let that loosen. That'll just fall out your ejector. And then when you turn this upside down, this should fall out. And you'll be left. It should. Well, it didn't. That dude's maybe getting a little chewed up. I just lost something. There it is, right there. Lift with the plunger and the plunger spring. And that is really all there is. Now, if you were going to do other stuff and, you know, whatever, you take off the sights. You can push these off with the pusher. You can use that rubber mallet like they talked about or whatever. So, anyway, once you've got to that point, then you need to go ahead... What was I going to say? Hang on. we got to shut the garage door. Once you're to this point, I guess I'll go ahead and take this part and talk about some of the do's and don'ts. That we're, you're almost ready to put it back together. You could pretty much clean everything. Like uh, I've heard several people talk about it in the way I clean mine. If I was going to go through a complete cleaning, whether it be this, just like it is, uh, Dawn dish soap is about the best thing to just clean. If you're doing like a deep cleaning, you want to take all this. To, yeah, not, not the hollow sun. But uh, actually, it's supposed to handle it. It's supposed to be waterproof. But if you just had your slide, all your components, even though they're metal, wash them just you know like you would dishes, Dawn dish soap, a toothbrush, a used one. Don't use the one you're going to use later on to brush your teeth. Clean everything. And if you have a few spots, you know, of course, the barrel might need a little attention with some other sort of cleaner or whatever. But in general, it doesn't take much. Clean them before you go back together. But you don't have to be this far down to, to clean just a general maintenance cleaning. This is if you're already doing something, you might as well, if you wanted to clean it all the way. So before I start back together, these are pretty simple. If you go to change this thing, it can be a trick on getting these in. So I'll show you that real quick. Uh... And, all right, hold the phones. I need to end this video. So before I end the video and hurry up and get it back together, I'm going to show you a couple things real quick. A Gen 5 to be by itself parts that you can't uh, swap out. Of course, if you had the slides, you could. But a Gen 5, Gen 4 for that matter, and 5, the firing pin is different. Uh, this firing pin will not work. All the other stuff is the same. It's right there. Technically, if this is the only one I had, I could probably finagle it to make it work, but you don't want to do that. Just get the right one. And then the only other thing is the plunger itself. The, uh, the extractor, all this. Now, the shadow systems are by itself on this piece. It's a shorter one. I, I've done that in other videos. And then the plunger is different safety plunger that part's different and the striker itself all the other stuff the back plate you can actually make a gen 3 work if you that's a gen 3 that's been cut to work like a gen 5 so those they will all interchange as far as fitting in but then to, to make it work on a gen 5 if you have a gen 3 you would need to cut that the only other thing like i because i showed you you can cut out on the and i think the glock uh, I think all Gen 3s, you're going to have that problem because this piece, or even on uh, in this, the way they're molded, you would have to make this thing wider for sure on the dagger. Uh, it won't accept the Gen 5 uh, recoil spring assembly. It just won't go. Like, it won't fit into... Uh, it won't fit into the metal part, is what I'm trying to say. So when this is in here, and then this is going in, like it just won't work. Trust me, it, it will not fit now. So what you have to do, as I've talked about in other videos, is you have to get another little adapter piece that so far I've seen anyway, any of the Gen 3s, this little adapter piece, you know, you need a recoil guide rod assembly that's capable of being taken apart. You'll need that little adapter to go in your Gen 5 slide. And then 
that will let it fit because it's the same. It's, it's still basically it's a Gen 3. So anyway, let's get this thing back together. The little side thing I'll tell you, if you're messing with this and you want to change out something, the only trick to these, and they sell these maritime ones, like I guess if you're going to try to shoot it with water in the gun, the gun submerged, not submerged, but you pulled it right out of the water, it may take a while before to fire. They sell these like uh, maritime ones that have cutouts to where this would, uh, basically this is loaded up and it'll shoot it, you know, it'll let it fire and not get vapor locked or whatever on the water. So anyway, they do make those if you wanted one. The only trick here is these two halves go together. And I guess I should pull it. I didn't want to do this. I'll pull it apart completely just to show you. So you have this, you have this, and you have this. So if you're sitting there looking at these parts, how do these go, Charlie? No matter what gin you have, as long as this is right for that gin, this goes in like this. Slide it all the way on, figure out a way to hold it while you're putting your uh, firing pin spring on, which can be hard to do, and you're going to slide these little halves on. And the only trick to that, other than figuring out how to hold this, I'd usually just try to put pressure like that. I use my the bottom, my thumb like this, upside down, and I stick one on just easier for me and I actually turn it out of the way now I'm trying to do it on camera I won't be able to but then I turn it out of the way and then I use my thumb on the other one just to just like that pinch them together pop them on and then you can manipulate them a little bit when you get it together but the trick here is and I'll try to do it so that's not how you do it if you see right where they seam together is right where the spring ends. You see how it's already kind of distorting. It, it's throwing it off. It can cause a little binding issues. And I'm not saying it won't move around. Who knows with however many times you fire it. But the trick is to leave those two halves where they meet. Like, you know, you got the other half over here. So you can only go so far. But like, so if I've got them, if I've got the end of the spring here. I want the end, the two ends meeting like a, about as far away as you can get them, if that makes sense. Then you're then you're good to go. So going back together is pretty simple. Start here. Make sure you didn't lose anything. Remember, we couldn't get that out. All it is is a chunk of metal. If you can see the other end, see where it's it's going to help hold in. So I just can't get it out because I don't have to mess with taking the screw out of the hollow sun and all that. And you don't really have to like. Uh, if I was worried about losing something, I was going to clean, do whatever. And when you oil something, you don't oil this channel. You don't oil this channel. You just oil the rails and anywhere up around the barrel you want or how it locks up. Not back here. None of this stuff up here because that's just, uh, the oil is just going to hold gunk instead of letting it, you know, fly off. So anyway, that's why the a Glock kind of runs dry. So no oil and none of this stuff. So put it back together. Wait, I jumped the gun. You got to go back with this stuff. So hang on, let me get the stuff we don't need out of the way. I got to make this video quick. You guys, somebody's like, dude, that ship done sailed a long time ago. So we'll get our spring ready to go and we're going to put it on basically up so the spring don't fall out. So the first thing I do is make sure that's out of the way. And you get your plunger spring and a plunger. And if you want, you can hold them like that and make sure you're... And with these, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just a it's a perfect circle, so it goes on anyway. And then you push that up while you're putting it. And it, this only goes in one way. Like, this round part goes to the back. The part that actually goes in between, the shell goes in between this and the slide. Like that. You couldn't, you can't, I mean, I guess maybe technically you could, but you can't really put this in wrong. So that goes in, and then you let go of the plunger, and it'll hold it like all that. It's like, so... Oh, whatever could go on, that's going to stay right there unless you push that in, then you got problems. So then you put this assembly would go back in. Don't forget the little, and I'm sure it would probably run without it, but don't forget this little, I forget what they got the name for that, that I don't even like the name of it, but that's why I forget it. Then your firing assembly goes back in. If I, unless I goofed up somewhere. 
So then you're going to need to push in on that assembly as you put this piece back on. And now you're not messing with the uh, extractor assembly yet. Now in the shadow systems, you don't have this on the back like that. It's a whole different deal. So you just get that where it's holding this in. Then you're going to get your punch, something small. You're going to push that down. Now here's a trick where I've lost, I don't know how many times I've pushed this in, it slipped off and stuff goes flying and it's hard to find. So do not slip off this. Get it pushed down. It should go flush or just past flush. And then you're going to start pushing this in. And you need something skinny enough to where when you push it all the way in and you take that out, nothing could jump. Like if you try to use something too fat, you try to pull it out right when you're trying to push it up and bad things can happen. So make sure that what you're using push in skinny enough. Then you're just going to push that up until you need to make sure it's snapped. Oh my God. I hope you guys saw that. This thing flew out and landed right there. So I have an issue right here. This is not locking up into that right away, which I don't know if I've ever checked that before. This is the first time I've used this style one. <sighs> let's let's try that again and you it needs to lock up for sure that thing could be it's probably not gonna anything happen but that's why I was checking it I push that in huh yeah it's not there it went you did you hear that did you hear that snap it made a little snap now it's locked in you got to double check that because that that you've heard of the term stacking tolerances you get stuff in there that you got to make sure it's locked in. So that one's good to go. That was the first time I'd done that. It's always when you're trying to record stuff. So barrel, all that stuff's good to go. And I'll be honest, uh, let me get, I'm going to stop real quick right here because this is about all where you need to be for general cleaning stuff. So I'm going to leave that alone for right now. We're going to jump. I know I'm kind of doing it weird, but we're going to slap this thing back together. And I'll just show you like my wiping cleaning what i oil real quick and then i'm gonna end this video hopefully it's not crazy long it's already oh my god it's 40 some minutes so you're gonna need to put back your basically reverse order i should go ahead and hang on i need to clean that it's got it must have been sitting in here somehow probably with the slide off it's gotten dust inside of it so yeah try to make sure she's clean but she'll run dirty she's a glock clone whatever so you're going to put your trigger assembly back in you're going to grab your slide stop release whatever you want to call it i try to make sure and i'll show you a trick that this baby is like even or on that side because it it can make a difference on your roll pin uh your not your roll pin but your other pin walking out so if you've got a timney trigger this is when it becomes a real nightmare you're trying to put this in and the trick here is just make sure that that uh, spring is still sticking out a little bit. So then you push this in, and you're going to want to go kind of reverse order. You're going to want to put your trigger pin back in. And it's – so basically you push it in, and you want to make sure that it catches on this. And if it – you're trying to get it in there, you can wiggle this around by putting pressure – up but pushing down here so I'm going up down like that and then wiggling it and that will let it without needing any other if if the trigger you sometimes you got to get over there and make sure the trigger is lined up to help start it get it started then once you do that what I do is like see how it push that all the way over I want to make sure that this baby is over here because that's why I think some of the problems can happen with the daggers uh pin walking out so just like i double checked that that thing was locked in i want to do the same thing here i want to make sure that that and it is it'll it'll move but it, it won't go far it's not it won't push out sometimes you get i had to have my special with the shadow system put it all together and i just choo, i could push the pin out like so easy and it's going to have a walk out issue when you start firing it so anyway hopefully i didn't forget anything we go right back with that we already put this back together i should have to do that let me get it out of the way i looked at that for a split second like, whoa where'd that thing come from so we've got that back together and this is honestly all the further no wait i gotta put the pins back in and you don't need to put them back in you don't even need your duct tape uh at first you don't even need to 
punch. But remember what I said, short to the back, long to the front. Make sure that where you've already hit, you're not going to hit again. I just keep the roll pin, the hole, the cutout, I just keep it down. I don't know if it matters, but in my opinion, like if it's going to get... I'm just thinking of this sets like this, and if it and it probably that's kind of where I put them in my bag. If for some reason it were to get water or whatever reason, uh, down is like for drainage. So you just start that front pin. Don't go crazy because I've got the regular hammer. The rear pin, same thing. Make sure that where you've already hit is what you're going to continue to hit. Sometimes different trigger assemblies you may need to hold or wiggle. Uh, because it can be spring loaded, but it's usually pretty simple. Whoa! Hold on. <laughs> it's usually pretty simple. I knocked you guys completely off the stand. Pretty simple fix. So let me let me get the right punch. Trick here is the have a good uh, don't let that oh my. I don't have enough hands or nobody to help me hold the phone while I'm holding this stuff shoot off the trick is don't lose your phone but don't lose your mind while you're trying to make a one time video it don't matter it's not going to be monetized anyway so you're back together and I could probably punch that in just a little bit more pretty simple so we're gonna test stuff but this is where if you're gonna just take it apart take it off the slot take the slide off take the barrel off and then do your wiping cleaning all the stuff bore snake whatever you want to do with the barrel uh, if you're ported it's gonna get real dirty so when I oil these, I'll be honest, I just put some on these uh, and mainly up underneath. But you can put a little oil on, you know, go under this side. I'd usually just put like a, a drop somewhere and then work it around on those right here. Uh, when you have the trigger out, I put grease right where the uh, trigger bar the trigger bar and the uh, disconnect go together. I put a little grease right there. That's going off Johnny Glock's. Uh, but then you can put a little oil like we're on these uh, daggers where it's metal to metal. You put a drop of oil there or whatever. None of this, this, none of this stuff needs any oil. Then when it comes to the barrel, uh, when you're putting it in, you put a drop, like a drop or a few drops around the top because as this goes in and out, so it's going to basically, hang on, let me get it here. You know, you put some on the end and when it cycles, it's going to kind of self-lubricate itself. And the only other place would be like right here. I wouldn't put anything back here to get around uh, and gunk up where the firing pin and all that stuff and the actual uh, shell is. But in the front, right where it locks up, put just a drop there. And then down in here where... This stuff, you can do it either way. You can put it on the barrel or put it down in here to where when they go together, where it's metal to metal, that doesn't hurt to have a little bit of oil there. It's just, it, you go too crazy, it's, and it doesn't hurt to go too crazy. Same thing on the slide. It's just more cleanup for you. Uh, it doesn't take a lot, so you, you don't need a lot. So anyway, barrel in. Put your guide rod in. Uh... I'll just put the little buffer in. Or wait, let me actually... You can't run the buffer if you want to run this adapter, but I'll put the adapter in just so you guys can see. That little adapter, instead of this going in right here, you just slide the little adapter on. Technically, it may add a little length, I guess, but it works fine. So then, since we were working with the... Uh, this is the one that's actually intended for the 19X, but it's with the stock everything. Then you just put, you know, make sure these line up, uh, kind of take your time. Just some people jam them on. You can, but uh, sometimes you can't. So then 
pop that all the way on. Now, this is not, I've already worked these. Uh, this slide's been worked onto another lower. That's why the tolerances are a little off in the 19X to this one. But as you can see, it still works. Now this thing, yeah, like it's, it's off. But so if I wanted to do that, and then this part here is what I was going to tell you. Then I'm definitely done with this video. So if, if you're trying to, uh, what in the world? There's something going on. If you're trying to uh, do what I was talking about with the cutout on that, when this finally makes its last little pass, yeah, I got something off on the tolerances since I, that's the only downside. You can do it, and I've done it. But then if you're going to try to, uh, you know, play Legos with all of your clones and stuff, if you've done like what I've done, talked about and, and tightened up different stuff and get, get them more uh, fit to, you know, not barrel. I haven't messed with any of the barrel to the slide stuff. That's a true gunsmithing type thing. But like just uh, tolerances from the lower to the slide, then you do come into like different little issues. But... So this one has been kind of tuned for this dude. That's why it, uh, what did I do wrong here? Hang on. So I'm just playing around. This isn't a finalized deal, but I've got the, uh, so you see I got a little wiggle, but like it's a tight, so if you're doing that and you're trying to get that to where as this goes in, it locks in the front, you just need to make sure like, you know, that when you let off, it still has positive lockup. That's the most important thing is this uh, lockup barrel to slide, but then it kind of helps aid in the lockup, in my opinion, from the slide to the frame. Because what will happen, and you guys may, you guys can test your daggers out, then I'm definitely out of here. My shadow systems was like this when I first got it. And let me slap it back together. Now this thing is like the smoothest one I have. But this dude, like I would come in here and it still may have a little wiggle or whatever, but I would come in here to pull the trigger and it would literally, like not a little, it would, I could watch the slide move up. Like it's where the plunger spring maybe or something was just like, it was literally like pushing up a little. And then, so as I got my daggers and was putting them together, they, they did it too. Maybe not as bad because this thing had been shot quite a bit. So I tightened it up and then I've since done that. Once I know for sure which barrel to slide and all that's going, I just make sure that I take out. Now you go too far because I've gone too far and I had to go the other way. And I've gone far enough with one, needed it, and I tried, just like I tried to do, if you try to put different slide on a different lower that you've already tweaked one or the other, and it may have the tolerances, kind of tolerance stacking type thing. But you can definitely take uh, PSA, Polymer 80, or whatever, and then you can kind of fine tune it for the slide that you've picked out, barrel, all that kind of stuff if you want to go that far. But this was just to show you, take them apart, Putting them back together, uh, so like this guy is actually set up for this one at the moment. So hopefully should fit. Shouldn't jump. Oh. So yeah, but sometimes it. Now well, I got a little hiccup right there. You see that? Okay, so this one. Hang on. Okay, so when I'm not holding that trigger back, see that little trigger movement? Goes right back in, but watch this. Okay, so we'll shoot it off. There's nothing in it. So when I'm holding it in, what would normally be the reset? See that? So that tells me I need to go. The recoil spring is probably a little weak, or I've got some issue going on in this one. This is a, like my last final one I haven't finished yet. I keep going between barrels, and then so I haven't done a final. Uh... So, I mean, it's fine, and it'll probably shoot fine, you know, because it's, you know, once you hit the 
slide release and once you start shooting you know it's gonna it's got a lot more force but i like to check mine like that and so far i guess i've been checking it like this and it's fine it's when it fires see that now if it were to fire well, it's got a pretty good hiccup let's see that yeah something yeah see that I think it firing it would be okay, but it may not. So I got to work on that. I don't know what I did to that. Okay, give me something to do. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Keep it under an hour. Hopefully, this uh, makes it to YouTube and they don't take it down, try to kill me, destroy my channel or whatever. Because I tried to put a video out there showing you guys if you want to completely tear down and put back together uh, PSA dagger, pretty much for any of your. Glock clones also, or Gen 3 Glock. You guys let me know what you're saying. I think I like it just like this. Uh, it's just, uh, I don't know. I choke that. I like to. That's just the sh uh, Shadow Systems little short boy. Everything's the size of a Glock 19. This one's, yeah, it's something with that trigger. It doesn't take, I mean, just pops right back in as soon as you. That's weird. That's the first one I've seen do that. You gotta figure that out. You gotta figure that out. See this dude right here. Of course, he's been good to go for a while. I need to get, I haven't even shot this thing yet. Yeah, he resets no matter what. And just to show you, well, no, that's good enough. Thanks for watching, guys. Get out, go bass and bonsai, whatever you do. Don't make an hour-long video tearing apart a pistol. See you later.